I am the Philosophical Bachelor and today I want to talk about optimism. The following is a work of theory fiction, a text I prepared for a fictitious conference which is upcoming in March and April this year. Memorandum tabled by the Sovereign Nation of Optimism for the Consideration of the Congress. The Choice of Optimism. The music composition entitled Long Player requires 1,000 years to complete a cycle, and John Cage's As Slow As Possible takes 639 years. With the ambition of completion, both music art projects have now been live for over 20 years and are intended to last and be enjoyed over generations of people. When operating at time scales way beyond our lifetimes, the custodians of these works have to plan for legal changes, building renewals, technology obsolescence, and geological changes that can strike as natural disasters. The social human factor remains crucial. These works can continue only as long as there are people interested and willing to put in the effort to keep them going. Those who conceive such projects are optimists, believing that their works are worthy of survival and having the trust, perhaps faith or hope, that there are others like them willing to go the distance to ensure the project's survival. The ultimate expression of optimism, however, must go to parents who deliberately not accidentally, not unintentionally, but deliberately bring offspring into the world. They have to set aside dour forecasts of runaway climate change, future viral pandemics and technological singularity, all of which may render human life in the future simply unviable, narrated to them in grim detail in literature of both the fiction and non-fiction genre and displayed in high resolution in films of apocalyptic visions. But even before caring about the future, they have to remain hopeful when faced with the crushing reality of their current existence, which may already feel Sisyphean. To bring a being into a world where the outlook is not merely uncertain, but bleak and yet profess that the deed is done not out of malice but love, is either mendacious or a monumental demonstration of optimism. But are not all our greater acts optimistic ones, since otherwise, why and how can we proceed? Like the parents who bring forth children, do not artists and scientists worthy of the name not wish that their contributions can endure? Do not business people and statesmen worthy of the title not try to build institutions that can last? To be sure, we must guard against the hubris of Ozymandias and the egomania of the Stalins of the world, for that way lays danger but merely the act of trying, from babies to the old and infirm, already speaks to the implicit optimism within us where we are simply carrying on with our lives. To continue to trudge forward, is there any feasible alternative to being optimistic when our choices are between death or giving up from despair and just mindless survival? It is a modern day's Pascal's wager. If there is a way out of future catastrophe, Action buttressed by hope trumps the paralysis of despair. If there is no way out, then being optimistic or pessimistic makes no effective difference, though a positive mindset might make the journey into darkness less difficult to bear. What those who choose the quadrants of optimism must guard against is fatalism, where they believe that things will somehow work out with no action demanded of them, that either others or divine intervention will save the day thus permitting them a hopeful but impotent quietism. Can pessimism likewise inspire us to action? It depends if the avowed pessimist is in reality a closet optimist. Such a person has a critical attitude towards humanity's current trajectory, raising their voice and advocating for change. But to even advocate for change implies that they are hopeful that other methods may prove effective in saving the day, making them in fact simply critical thinkers and actors rather than down-and-out pessimists. A staunch pessimist would believe, rightly or wrongly, that any possible course of action will simply be futile, and hence there is no point in even trying. All roads lead not to Rome but failure. Their complete skepticism erases any glimmer of hope, and if there is no hope, then there is really nothing left to try for. But the deck seems to have now become stacked against us. 
in terms of the environment, slowing down our pace of industrialization is not enough to save us. Even if all of humankind stops dead in their tracks tomorrow, the polar ice caps will not reform. They may stop melting, but to form new layers of ice will require not merely stopping heat injection, but active heat remover to overcome the latent energy needed for phase change from liquid to solid water. Our target as a species to limit annual temperature rises to 1.5 degree at the Paris Climate Accords in 2015, hence falls far short of what is required. Industrial techno deceleration is simply not enough. Instead, we need active fixes, which will probably come in the form of technological solutions. Prudence and care requiring massive amounts of effort to investigate potential solutions thoroughly will be needed in order to ensure the effects of the medicine are not even worse than the disease. Act we must, and to act we need to be optimistic. Such optimism must not be a capitulation to magical or illusory thinking, but a clear-headedness based on reason leading to concrete plans and firm actions. Remaining hopeful in difficult time helps us overcome by creating a basis for action. Thank you.